This video is answering one question. Can photographers get away with a base model M2 MacBook Air? The new M2 chip is incredibly powerful, but is it enough power for photographers? Can a $1,200 machine with eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigs of storage work for photographers, or is there a better option out there? If it's your first time here, my name is Chris Pieta and I teach creative business and I run a production company. I take photos for clients every single day, so I know a thing or two about what gear makes for a good workflow. Now, this video is not your typical M2 MacBook Air review. Yes, the new M2 Air has a redesigned body, a better webcam, and MagSafe. But that's not what we're talking about. This is for photographers and creatives looking to see if the M2 MacBook Air is right for them. If you're not a photographer and your workflow doesn't need a lot of storage or power, then the M2 Air is fantastic. This laptop is perfect for students and most people, but that's not what this video is about. We'll be covering a lot today on how the M2 MacBook Air stacks up in a photography workflow. I've got all these topics on the screen, so let's get into them. What do photographers need out of a computer? It doesn't matter if you're taking photos for fun on the weekend or a pro working with clients. Your laptop is going to serve two main functions in your photography life. You're going to be taking your photos off your SD card and storing and editing them on your laptop. Storage and editing are the two main uses that photographers need out of a laptop. Let's talk about the storage on the M2 MacBook Air. The base model comes with 256 gigs of storage. Quite frankly, that is not enough for any serious photography workflow. Of that 256, a lot is eaten up by the operating system and various apps and other files you have on your computer. Let's be generous and say you'll have about half of that for actually storing your photos, so 128 gigabytes. The memory cards that I use in my cameras are 128 gigabytes apiece, so you can fill your computer up with about one of these. To give you some perspective from a pro workflow, I use the Sony a7R4, which creates photos that are over 100 megabytes apiece, so I can only fit around 1,000 photos on this memory card. That's not that many to completely fill up this laptop, but let's be more realistic. People who are considering this laptop aren't taking photos on a $4,000 camera. They're probably using something smaller like a Sony a7 III or a Fuji X-T3. These both take 24 megapixel photos and they're around 50 megabytes apiece. So if you're following along with the math here, you know that we can now fit twice as many photos on this memory card. This is going to be a really realistic workflow for a lot of you. 2,000 photos plus generating previews is going to fill up this laptop and that's fine. 2,000 photos is a lot. When I was getting started in photography in 2017, my laptop only had 256 gigs of storage and it was fine but with that you are going to fill it up fast you'd be surprised how quickly you can actually take 2,000 photos and fill up that drive you'll need external drives and you'll be constantly moving photos around that takes time and it costs money now you might be saying chris i'll just pay the 200 bucks extra to upgrade to the 512 gigabyte option and i'll be fine and yes that's valid but it gets to be more complicated than just that. I'll be talking more about what to upgrade at the end of this video because it's actually a complex issue. Right now, we're sticking with the base model. So for this next part of this video, I actually had it written out before I tested the SSD speeds and I had to rewrite it based off my results. I thought the SSD would be visibly slower because Apple put one NAND chip into the base model compared to two NAND chips in previous models. You would think that this would make the SSD 50% slower when importing photos, right? Well, I imported 10 gigs of data off an SD card onto this hard drive and onto the hard drive of my M1 Pro MacBook. And the results surprised me. They both imported 10 gigs of data in about 40 seconds each. In the real world tests, the import wasn't limited by the SSD, it was limited by the SD card read speed. And this is a realistic scenario for a lot of you out there. But that's not the whole picture. The SSD is used for a lot of the processes in the computer, even during Lightroom. Two NAND chips will give you faster performance in a lot of aspects on this machine. I honestly don't like the change that Apple made here with the NAND chip. These machines also rely on a lot of swap memory when you're doing very intensive tasks that take up a lot of RAM. Slower SSDs result in slower swap memory, resulting in slower performance. Let's now talk about editing performance. Storage, you can always make do with external drives, but editing, not so much. Starting with a memory on this computer. How does eight gigs of unified memory hold up? Eight gigabytes doesn't sound like much, and it's not. But on these new machines, less memory can go a long way. I use the M1 Pro MacBook Pro as my daily driver, and 16 gigabytes of RAM on that holds up just fine. I did a lot of real world testing, and I wanna go through it. We have the typical tests of importing, generating previews, and exporting in Lightroom, but I also want to include real-world usage tests. After all, 
If you're importing or exporting, you can always go do something else, but the actual editing performance is what I care about the most. So let's get into all these tests. For our first test, we wanted to import and build one-to-one -one previews for 100 photos. These are about 100 megabyte files we're moving, so about 10 gigs of data here. I'm going to be comparing the M2 MacBook Air with the base model 16-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip inside of it. That's my daily driver and it'll serve as a great reference point. All right, so the tests. For this first import and build previews test, the MacBook Air took 9 minutes and 14 seconds, while the M1 Pro MacBook Pro did the same task in 3 minutes and 20 seconds. Already, we're seeing an insane performance coming out of the M1 Pro compared to the M2 chip. Here is where we really saw the M2 being throttled because of lack of a fan. When I started these two tests, the laptops were actually keeping up, but the throttling is brutal on the M2 Air. Next up, we applied some presets to all 100 photos and exported them in full resolution. This is something I do all the time because in my line of work, I create stop motion assets for clients by stitching together many photos. Again, in these results, we're going to be seeing some throttling from the M2 Air. The M1 Pro did this task in 2 minutes and 49 seconds. I took the M2 Air 4 minutes and 58 seconds. It's great to see that there wasn't as big of a difference here as there was in generating previews. The Air actually handled this task extremely well. You need to remember that the M2 chip is extremely capable. It's a little unfair of me to compare it with the M1 Pro, but I'm doing this for good reason. Wait until the end of the video to find out why. During both of these tests, I had a couple tabs open in the background to make for a more realistic work environment. Whenever I'm editing, I'm always listening to music and using Slack to talk to my team, so I had to make this test as realistic as possible. During these tests, I also kept an eye on the RAM usage from the M2 Air, and it's not pretty. We all know that Lightroom takes up a lot of memory. In fact, it was using about 8 gigs during these tests and normal usage throughout the day. Just to use Lightroom, we are using up all the memory this thing has. There's going to be constant swap memory being used if you're editing on this machine, which is fine, but it does slow down the machine significantly. On to the editing tests. In my MacBook M1 Pro review video, I did all the same tests, so if you want to check those out, they're linked down below. The M2 Air performed okay for the most part. There was always some lag going on with the edits. First, I tested out photos with the Sony A7R4, which are about 100 megabytes apiece. There was an obvious delay when switching between photos, applying presets, and even basic adjustments. This computer was not handling these well at all, but most people buying a $1,200 laptop aren't going to be using a $4,000 camera. Let's get more realistic. I tested out photos from my Sony a7 III, which takes 24 megapixel photos that are about 50 megabytes each. These are the types of images most people will be editing from the beginner to intermediate level cameras. With these smaller image files, editing was actually really smooth. Jumping from image to image was quick, basic edits were smooth, applying presets did have a little lag, which I was disappointed by, but it's not a deal breaker. I was really happy to see that applying radial filters and graduated filters was super smooth. No lag there. I use these all the time in product photography. Lastly, we tried using a brush, and with that, there was a noticeable amount of lag. That's a bummer. Overall, Lightroom performance is good if you're using a beginner level camera. Once you start delving into a pro level camera, it's not feasible on this machine. Let's talk about Photoshop. I use Photoshop for every single image I edit for clients. Product photos need to be free from blemishes, so the spot healing tool is my best friend. Using brushes and healing tools in Photoshop on the M2 Air was really smooth actually. There was never any noticeable lag, so I was pleasantly surprised. Same holds true for using brushes like doing dodge and burn. I didn't do any deep dives into Photoshop, but for those basic adjustments, the M2 performs just fine. Having 8GB of RAM will be a problem here because I always edit from a Lightroom catalog, meaning that I need both Lightroom and Photoshop open. Since Lightroom is taking up 8 gigs of RAM already, we're using a lot of swap memory to keep Photoshop open. Let's talk about using an external monitor when editing. When I edit, I always use an external monitor. The LJ 5K Ultrafine is my monitor of choice, so that's what we're using for the tests here. I will say this is a little unrealistic because if you're buying a $1,200 laptop, I don't think you're using a $1,200 monitor as well. Anyways, onto the test. I plugged this bad boy in and opened up Lightroom. The result was what I expected. There was way more lag in using Lightroom when editing on the big screen. Adjustments felt slow, there was significant delay between switching photos, and it just wasn't fun. If you always edit on an external monitor, this probably is not the laptop for you. By the way, if you're getting any value out of this video so far, please drop a like below. We've got one more thing to talk about in the editing workflow, the screen. How is the actual screen on the M2 Air? It's great. We have an upgraded 13.6 inch liquid retina display with IPS technology, 
It's got a wide P3 color gamut with support for a billion colors, and it's got 500 nits of brightness. All this combined gives you a beautiful display for editing photos. You'll be able to have accurate colors in your images, which is critical in photography. Even though we have this brand new body for this laptop that really matches the new MacBook Pros, the screens aren't the same. The M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros have an XDR display capable of HDR content. They also have ProMotion and the Air doesn't. I don't think this is a deal breaker, but it is something to keep in mind. All that said, this is a beautiful display that will be plenty for your photo editing needs. Now actually launching Lightroom in Photoshop is still super fast on this laptop. Launching apps in general is lightning fast and I never had to wait more than a few seconds to start editing. Real quick, I want to mention tethered shooting. When I'm doing client shoots, I always have my camera plugged into my computer so I can quickly review the files and approve them or retake them. It's important to me that the files transfer quickly from my camera to my laptop with a little lag. I'm happy to say that on the M2 Air with the Sony Imaging Edge workflow, tethering was super fast. The photos loaded onto the laptop quickly and I was able to review them right away. If you tether into Lightroom, this is a different story. You will get lag. In all of this testing, the new M2 MacBook Air is extremely quiet. In fact, there's no fans in it to make any noise. For most people buying this laptop, this will be fine. But if you have a photography workflow, it's going to slow you down. This is especially evident when exporting a lot of photos or any CPU or GPU intensive tasks. As you acquire more and more from the M2 chip, it's going to start heating up. There's no fans to help dissipate all this heat, so what happens? The laptop throttles itself so it doesn't overheat. This means that you're getting worse performance as the laptop heats up. This is going to be a very real issue that you will face when you do these large exports or imports or build previews or any other intensive tasks on this laptop. The M2 also doesn't have any vents on the sides for airflow. I'm assuming this is a compromise from Apple to help keep it thin. And while the lack of fans isn't necessarily a deal breaker, it does mean you're going to have worse performance than if this chip was in a model with fans in it. I'm going to give my recommendations on specs and what laptop you should buy in just a little bit, but first let's run through the other new features. Apple brought back the notch to the MacBook Air, which I'm all for. We get a little bit more screen real estate, and the notch has never bothered me. I think it's worth having if we can get the extra screen for it. MagSafe is back, another great addition. It frees up ports on the laptop so you can plug in more accessories. There's two USB-C ports on here and a headphone jack. No SD card reader though. It's kind of a bummer if you're using this for photography since you're still going to need that dongle. Battery life is great. Apple claims up to 18 hours. Obviously with a photography workflow, it's gonna be much, much lower. It's still better than any Windows laptop out there. In my real world performance, I was able to get four to five hours doing heavy editing on it. There's new speakers, which sound great. They're not as good as the MacBook Pro speakers, but still very solid. I'm always impressed by what Apple can fit into such a small package. Finally, we've got 1080p webcam on here, which is long overdue, but greatly appreciated, and a super fast fingerprint reader. A lot of these features are very similar to what we see on the M1 Pro and M1 Max laptops. In fact, the MacBook Air is just a slightly smaller version of those. It's way thinner too. I'm constantly comparing it to those MacBook Pros and there's good reason. Let's talk through my recommendation. For most photographers that are remotely serious about photography, I don't recommend the base model M2 MacBook Air. The performance just isn't there. There's not enough storage and not enough RAM. If you are just starting out in photography and think you'll just do this as a hobby and you're okay with the slower performance and having to use external hard drives, then for 1200 bucks, this is still a good buy. But for most photographers, you need more RAM and storage. Now, you're probably saying, Chris, what if I just upgrade the storage and RAM on this computer? Great idea. Let's go through that. If we want to get 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD on this thing, that's an extra 400 bucks we're talking. Now, we have a $1,600 machine that's way more capable than the base model. We have the faster SSD speeds and way more RAM to play around with. But at the $1,600 mark, we're creeping really close to the base model MacBook Pro with M1 Pro chip. Right now on Amazon, the base 14 inch model M1 Pro is $1,800. That base model already has the 512 gigabyte SSD and 16 gigs of RAM. For an extra 200 bucks, you can upgrade from the M2 Air to an M1 Pro MacBook Pro. The M1 Pro has got a fan in it, a better screen, SD card slot, and the M1 Pro chip, which is extremely fast. If I were buying a laptop for photography, the M1 Pro MacBook Pro is looking pretty good for 1800. And even if you have to buy it for full price for $400 more than that upgraded M2 Air, I think that's worth it. If you're a photographer who's at all serious about this hobby or job, and you don't wanna waste your time waiting with lag during your edits, then the M1 Pro MacBook Pro base model is a way better choice than the M2 Air. It is much more expensive than the base model M2 Air, but that difference is worth it in my opinion, especially 
especially if you have a photography business where the faster you work, the more money you get. I run a production company with many people on my team, so I need performance. If you're a photographer looking to start earning money from your hobby, I have a free creative business checklist down below that can get you started. The M2 MacBook Air is a very fast machine in terms of all the basic day-to-day -day functions that I do. But when it comes to editing, it just doesn't hold up. My name is Chris Pieta. I post creative business and photography videos every week, and I'll catch you in the next one.